Mrs. Number Two. Hey, hey, it's Katsu and Haz here. Don't worry though, we won't be dancing. Bitcoin was invented to process electronic payments. Hey, we're still bullish though. It is happening. All right, Katsu, kick us off with this week's news. So an unknown Ethereum user last week accidentally sent not one, but two transactions with hugely disproportionate fees. And when we say huge, we mean huge. The giveaway started when a user setting their own gas price sent $2.6 million in fees for a $133 Ether transaction. Not done, they did it again paying $2.6 million though this time for a $86,000 transaction. So how did this happen? The community has had a lot of fun trying to work out what went wrong, with theories ranging from programming error to money laundering. Ethereum founder Vitalik Buterin even speculated that it could be an elaborate blackmail attempt. Or could the user just have fat fingers? The fingers you have used to dial are too fat. What are your theories? Let us know in the comments below. When you think of Bitcoin bulls, who usually comes to mind? Pomp, the Winklevi? Until recently, you probably wouldn't have said JP Morgan, whose CEO once branded Bitcoin a fraud. But it seems the Wall Street giant has come crawling back. Research by the bank's analysts have now said that Bitcoin is looking mostly positive and cryptocurrencies, more broadly, have longevity as an asset class, saying COVID was its first stress test and it passed. Earlier this month, JP Morgan also signed established crypto exchanges Coinbase and Gemini as customers. Is this the beginning of a long and fruitful relationship? No sooner had crypto media started claiming the dawn of India's crypto spring, Someone had to ruin it. The Indian Ministry of Finance last week proposed to legally ban cryptocurrencies and has started consultations. The move follows the Supreme Court's decision in March to end the Indian Central Bank's two-year ban on banks providing services to crypto businesses, including exchanges. So is India's crypto journey over before it's even begun? Over to Haz for word on the tweet. All right, guys, welcome back after a mini break. And we have a super exciting addition for you in this week's Word on the Tweet, as we reveal who really wrote Harry Potter. <coughs> okay, maybe not. But Wright can't seem to stay out of the spotlight. Having recently made another weird claim in his quest to be recognized as the true Satoshi, he now says he was behind the Mt. Gox hacks in 2011, in which almost 80,000 Bitcoin was stolen. As famous cypherpunk Adam Back points out, Crypto detectives were astonished to notice that the court documents filed by Wright's lawyers said he previously controlled the one FEEX address where the stolen coins were sent. So did he do it? He's made some hard to believe claims before, so the jury's out. But usually you want to claim credit for things that aren't going to land you in jail. And here's another crime we guess he might want to claim credit for. Last week, podcaster Eric Savix tweeted that he'd lost all his Bitcoin savings in an elaborate phishing scam after he downloaded a malicious version of the Keep Key Bitcoin wallet. Savix was understandably devastated and his post attracted sympathetic words from leading figures in the crypto, including names like CZ, Eric Voorhees and Jameson Loop. The community rallied as it does best and have so far sent Savix over 0.7 Bitcoin, so we can start again. Although the latest update is he may be sending them back. But remember, be careful who you trust online and check all software to make sure it's legit. All right, guys, that's a wrap for this week. Make sure you smash that subscribe button, like, you'll make my day, you'll make your own day. It'll be great, why wouldn't you? And as always, hashtag to the moon.